Hey, Dr. C here with you. Let's talk about the connection between iodine and its importance to breast health. This is a big deal. There's a lot of information about iodine that's not correct, that's misleading, that's confusing. And it's common that when someone hears my message about how reducing iodine can help their thyroid, they think, well, but I heard that I need iodine for breast health and I need high amounts of it to maintain healthy breast tissue. Let's talk about that and see if there's a way in which you can have good amounts of iodine for thyroid health and have that not be a problem for breast health. So for starters, let's talk a bit about what iodine is. This is a mineral, it's a trace mineral, and it's an essential one. Your body needs it for maintaining normal thyroid hormone output. We get this in foods that are ultimately derived from the ocean or from soil that has iodine that's mixed into it from ocean sources eventually. It ends up in our bodies, we absorb it, we concentrate it within the thyroid, and it's a big part of making thyroid hormone. So far, so good, right? Well, here's the paradox. Uh, there's a narrow window of iodine for best thyroid function. It's possible to get too little or too much. For a lot of human history, areas existed in which people got too little. And because of that, people developed genes that allowed them to do really well on tiny amounts of iodine. They adapted to have a really strong pump to pull in every speck and put it in the thyroid. That's cool. Now in the modern world, there's iodine from a lot of sources. And those who still have that gene variation of pumping all of it in, they can build up too much too easily. Now, not everyone has that. Some people don't concentrate it quite as aggressively. And those people are less apt to have problems when they get too much. They're never gonna have issues from that. If they were in an area that was low in iodine, they probably would have problems, but that's rarely the case. So they're probably better adapted, more luckily, to the modern world. But a lot of us have genes that make us do well on scarce amounts, but not do a great job on too much. Now, the connection is that the same pump that's in the thyroid is in the breast tissue. Why is that? Well, part of it is just kind of chance. So the tissues that formed the thyroid in an embryo end up being similar to tissues that form the intestinal tract, the breast tissue, the prostate. There's a little overlap that the same precursor cells made different things. And these are shared embryologic origins. And that's why we see the same iodine pump in some other parts of the body, even if it's not needed there. The other reason though, is that the pump is used for forming healthy, nutritious breast milk. The amounts of iodine that most of us require are small, and those amounts are not found in the bloodstream. So we have to concentrate it because we're used to running on such little amounts. Now the problem though is that if we get a lot, that could be too greatly concentrated. So the pump has a safety valve. If we get a lot of iodine, we shut the pump off and we quit pulling it in. And that's true in the thyroid and the breast tissue. Now breast milk, because it's largely made from blood, the, if the blood levels of iodine are not enough for the thyroid without being concentrated, the same thing is true for the breast milk. So mom's body <clears throat> puts more iodine in the breast milk than is found in the bloodstream. So there's a pump built into that. Uh, this came to the attention in the case of researchers who were looking at fibrocystic breast disease, also called fibroadenomatous disease. And this is a condition that causes the breast to be swollen and really painful, really sore. Some found, perhaps by chance, that high-dose iodine could help. Specifically, about two-thirds of women, between 50 and 60 percent, that had fibrocystic breast disease could see their pain symptoms go down by about half for several weeks when they took high doses of iodine. So let's be clear, it didn't stop all symptoms for all people for all durations but it did lower some symptoms for some people for a while. And that was, that was fine. That was a useful, useful finding at the time. Now, a man who was a gynecologist and was looking for more ways to help fibrocystic breast pain, he saw some of these old studies and he made a confusion about iodine working as a nutrient and iodine working as a drug. And what he speculated was that these women felt better because they were actually iodine deficient. And for some unusual reason, they needed much higher amounts than would be expected to reverse their deficiency. And that was why iodine helped their breast pain, 
he thought that breast pain was somehow tied to an iodine deficiency. You know, plausible stuff, but the difficulty is that nutrients can work as nutrients, but they may also work as drugs. So iodine, one example is that it's an antiseptic. If you put it on a skin cut, it could kill many bacteria and make you less apt to have that cut get infected. That wouldn't mean that an infected cut was a sign of an iodine deficiency. They're just not related things. And we now know that that was the case with fibrocystic breast disease. It didn't help because they were iodine deficient. The paradox is it helped because it stopped them from getting iodine in their breasts. We've now learned that one of the reasons fibrocystic breast disease is painful is because that iodine pump is overactive and it's pulling in too much iodine. The extra iodine creates free radical damage. It also pulls in sodium. It's a sodium iodide symporter, and that pulls in water. So a lot of the swelling and pressure comes from water, and the pain comes from the swelling, but also from the free radical damage and the extra iodine. Now, when there's a lot of iodine coming in somewhere, one of the ways that stops that, paradoxically, is more iodine. When you give a high dose of iodine, you stop <clears throat> that pump from working and you stop it from taking up iodine for a while and for some people. That's why this doesn't work for everyone. That's why it doesn't work for all that long. So yeah, high dose of iodine can stop the absorption of iodine. So the speculation though kept on going. Uh, the thought was too, we, we see fibrocystic breast pain down, but then people thought about the Japanese paradox. You know, they have lower rates of breast cancer, but they have a higher intake of iodine. Both of those things are true. Many thought that therefore the iodine caused them to have less breast cancer. Well, it may or may not be true. There's a lot of other factors. So this has been now looked at in quite a bit of detail. And we've learned that <clears throat> in Japanese women, those on traditional diets, they have less breast cancer. We think lower body weight, lower alcohol intake, higher intake of dietary soy, more physical activity, these are the main things that lower their risk. But if you take Japanese women and you separate them into categories based upon their iodine status, those who consume the most iodine, they're the ones that are getting breast cancer. They have the highest risk of developing breast cancer. This is now shown up in non-Japanese populations as well. The more iodine in a woman's body, the more likely she is to develop breast cancer. And we've even seen studies looking at <clears throat> all cause mortality from heart disease and various types of cancer. And these have shown that those with the highest iodine intake have the highest risks of all cause mortality. So what's up with the breast tissue? Well, the breast tissue has the iodine pump and normal, healthy, non-lactating breast tissue, the pump is pretty well shut off. There's no concentration of iodine. For some women, there's a glitch in the pump. And if they're not lactating, they still pump in a whole lot of extra iodine, more than they would if they were lactating. Those women may develop fibrocystic breast disease. If that same problem is worse or goes on for longer, those same changes may lead to breast cancer. And there's even now some research going on finding ways to use radioactive iodine as a treatment for breast cancer. And that's because breast cancers love iodine. They suck it in preferentially. So we now know there's a continuum from normal healthy breast tissue, lactating tissue, fibroadenomatous tissue, and then cancerous tissue. And each step up is a more aggressive uptake of iodine in the breast tissue. <clears throat> so the breast tissue, like all parts of the body, um, do need thyroid hormones. And the thyroid does need iodine. So it's not that iodine is bad. Our bodies do need some. But we're healthiest being at a safe amount that balances good thyroid function. And that's not none. When I talk about being on a low iodine diet, it's never an iodine-free diet. All foods have iodine. Even when you're avoiding the top sources of it, you're not getting none. You're still getting at least 50 or 100 micrograms. And for those prone to thyroid disease, that's the healthiest amount. For those who are concerned about their breast health, that same step is a good thing in terms of cutting the risk for breast cancer and cutting the risk for developing fibroadenomatous disease. High dose iodine doesn't help the breasts. It stops them from taking up iodine for a while. 
But the more effective way to stop the breast from getting too much iodine is not to consume too much iodine. So Dr. Christensen here with you. I want to take some time and talk through the relevance of iodine and breast health and let you know that a healthy iodine thyroid friendly diet is great for your breasts. You don't have to pick or choose. All right, take great care of yourself.